Terex AC500 2 mobile crane has a maximum capacity of 500 tonnes and a main boom of 56 metres. It can carry a maximum counterweight of 180 tonnes. This version of the model comes in the colours of the German cranage company Felbermeyer and it comes in an entirely plain box except for a small label in one corner. The box is heavy but surprisingly compact given the size of the model inside and when you take the lid off the various parts are packed neatly inside. There is an instruction sheet inside but it only covers the reeving of the superlift and in fact it's not actually appropriate to the model in the box, it, it uh, really refers to an earlier version of the model. The crane itself is very heavy so you just need to make sure you lift it on something solid rather than a smaller part and you can just lift that straight out of the box. There are just a few other parts to remove, these include two sets of counterweights and there's also the counterweight tray to attach to the back of the crane. There's an adapter piece for loading the counterweight on the carrier deck and the remaining parts are the hook and a small bag of parts. For the assembly there are no detail parts such as door mirrors to add so instead we'll set the model up ready for lifting and the first thing to do is to open up the outriggers which just pull out and they are telescopic. The pads are plastic and they just push on to the end of the screws which represent pistons. They can be a little bit fiddly to stay on but once you've got them on you can use them to unscrew the pistons and then set the outriggers up ready for lifting. The operator's cab is on a beam and that can be just folded out and then moved forwards ready for operating the crane. And while we're looking at it it's also on a pivot so that the operator can get a better view when lifting at height. The superlift mechanism has to be reeved up and that's easy to do just raise the superlift arms first and then take the thread off of the drum on one side and then it just runs up and over the pulley at the end of the superlift beam and then runs back down to the pulley that's connected to the boom. The thread then runs on the outside of that pulley over and through to the inside and then runs back up to the tying off point at the end of the superlift beam. It's then simple enough just to pass the thread through the tying off point and make a knot or two to secure it in position. When it's all knotted up you can just wind in the drum and take in the slack thread and then that's the super lift reeved up on one side and you just need to repeat the process on the other side and when you're done just clip off the free ends at the tying off points and the reeving is completed. The next job to do is to reeve up the hook so you need to pull some thread off of the main winch drum which is quite stiff on the review model so it took a fair bit of effort to actually pull some off and you just need to pull off enough to be able to reeve the hook. It's best to raise the boom a little bit at this point and it's extremely stiff and so you have to put a fair bit of effort in to lever it up. You can then reeve the hook, there's no reeving diagram provided with the model so it's just a matter of running it up and down a couple of times as it suits you and uh, pass it through the hook and up over the top and when you've done that and you're ready you can then tie it off at the top. There's no tying off point provided so the way I do it is just to run it back over a pulley and over the top of the boom and then tie it off on the axle that sits at the um, back edge of the boom top. And if you then do all that the hook hangs reasonably well and looks quite realistic. One nice aspect of the model is that you can pose it as if it was erecting its own counterweight and you fit the adapter onto the middle of the carrier and then the counterweight plate just sits on the top of the adapter and you could display the model then loading its own counterweight and here I'll just pop them on just to show what it looks like when all the counterweights actually loaded up. At this point the real crane would swing round and attach its counterweight. If you just want to go ahead and fix the counterweight that's really easy to do because the plate just kind of clips on at the rear and it's only secured by two plastic bolts which are very easy to get in, one on either side and when that's pinned in position it's really quite secure, doesn't float about or move, quite solid and then you just add the two stacks of counterweight, one on either side. And with that done, the assembly of the model is complete. There's very little detail underneath the model with the chassis being purely functional from a modelling point of view. The driving cab looks good with some nice lights but there are no windscreen wipers or door mirrors. The wheel hubs are plastic and all of the same design and at the rear there are very simple light details and some plastic wheel chocks. 
Behind the cab there's a fairly simple modelled exhaust and the Felbermeyer graphics look sharp. Other parts of the carrier deck have diamond plated surfacing and that adds to the detail. The outrigger beams are metal and decorated with some graphics, but the pistons do show a visible screw thread. The top of the crane body has got silver diamond plated surfacing, and the counterweight pieces have usable lifting lugs and some warning graphics on the corners. The operator's cab is fairly simple but it's a good looking computer console on the inside. The main lifting rams for the boom have plastic jackets but the colour match is very good. The superlift components are mostly metal including the pendants with small brass rivets fixing the winch drums. The heavy hook is a good looking piece but all of the pulleys on the model are plastic. This is a big heavy model but it rolls well in a straight line on a smooth surface. Looking underneath the model there's no particular suspension but a number of the axles do float. There is link steering with axles 1 to 5 linked together but axle 5 hardly moves at all. At the rear axles 6, 7 and 8 are linked together and the steering is proportional with the outermost wheels turning the most. The steering works pretty well although it's not possible to replicate crab steering where all of the wheels point in the same direction. But if you do set the steering it does work very well because the wheels are not fouled at all and the model does trace a very realistic looking arc uh, when you push it along fully steered. To set the super lift up you just lift up the two beams to a position where they're at right angles to the boom and when you do that you need to um, make sure that the pendants that are hanging off the bottom are kind of hanging in the right shape. And when it's in position you can start to raise the boom by pulling it out at the end of the telescope and that lifts up the connection points for the super lift gear and if you keep pulling the boom top out the super lift drums unwind as you go. This version of the crane has a sideways super lift so you just spread out the two beams and then you can tension the whole thing up by winding in on the two drums and they've got enough friction to actually apply a load and keep the whole thing tensioned up and rigid which is good. If you want to extend the boom more you just pull out the telescope and it uses the locking clip system that these models often have and when it's fully extended you'll just see a little pin comes out of the hole and that locks the boom in place. If you extend the boom fully an impressive model results and it's well over a metre tall. If that's not enough you can extend it even further with an optional luffing fly jib and that's been reviewed separately. Also available is a heavy lift jib section which has also been reviewed separately. The last feature to look at is the working winch and this operates by using your thumb on the serrated edge of the winch drum so you won't want to do this too much because it will make your thumb sore but you can lower and raise the hook and it works reasonably well and there's enough friction to hold a reasonable load on the hook. This crane from Conrad has been around since 2001 so it doesn't have the detail of more modern models but it's a strong and heavy piece of metal and it still looks impressive. If you like big crane models then it's recommended.